Hello and welcome to this presentation, an animated introduction to vibration analysis. My name is Jason Tranter. I'm the founder and managing director of Mobis Institute. Now the idea of this presentation is to take a quick look at all the primary vibration analysis techniques, spectra, time waveform analysis, phase analysis and orbits, in, as well as high frequency detection techniques called you know, demodulation enveloping and so on. The idea is so that if you're new to vibration analysis, you've got an idea of the types of tools at your fingertips. If you're in a plant where vibration analysis is being performed, either by people in the company or uh, consultants, you've got an idea of what sorts of tests are available and what sort of information can be gained and also get an idea whether they are actually using the right types of tests. Anyway, let's get started. The aim is to avoid that. We don't want the equipment failing catastrophically, which causes secondary damage, which causes downtime, potentially safety incidents. We lose production. We have much higher costs associated with the repair. Uh, there are a lot of reasons we want to avoid that. So we can use vibration anal analysis alongside other technologies to get the earliest warning that that is beginning to occur, that the, the early stages of failure are occurring, which may end up like that if we don't do anything about it. And vibration analysis is a terrific tool for doing exactly that, because vibration analysis, in a sense, a, a enables us to look inside the machine and see exactly what's going on, whether it's gearbox with bearings, um, you know, blowers and fans and, and so on. Um, <coughs> We, we want to be able to look at those bearings, look at the gears, look at the impellers and so on and find out what's going on. You know, if we could look at that bearing and tell that it's lubricated properly, installed properly, there's no damage to the raceways, there's no damage to the rolling elements, then we have the confidence that we can go on producing our product and it's all good. But if we see something, then we can act. Same goes with gears, whether they're timing gears or inside a gearbox. Are they aligned? Are they lubricated? Is there damage to the teeth? Uh, anywhere, you know, whatever the case may be. Vibration analysis lets us look inside the machine. Now, in this case, we've got, you know, the motor driving a pump and a, a vibration sensor sitting up on top. Now, I'll explain a bit more about that in just a moment. But you may first imagine that, you know, all the vibration is transmitted along and goes up to this point and maybe from this side as well. And that's one of the things I'll mention a bit more about in a moment. Just where is the vibration coming from and, and how is it getting to that sensor. But one of the keys is that vibration analysis in a sense enables us to sort of listen. Well, what is happening with the, the shaft? What's happening with the bearings? What's happening with the rotor bars? Now we pick up all those sounds from here, they all combine together into one measurement, but separating them in frequency and some of the other things we'll explain, let us do that so we get an idea of the health of each of those components. Over this side, oh, that bearing is not in good condition. Uh, for the pump, we've got pump cavitation. Uh, on the uh, machine head, okay. Not many machines sound like that, but anyway. Okay, so the way we do this is, as you've just seen, we can put the vibration sensor up there on the bearing and all the vibration is transmitted you know, through the machine itself up to that point. The, mount, the sensor has to be mounted properly. That is very important so that all those high and low frequencies get up into that sensor. But the fact is, when we mount it up on top, that is sensitive to the vertical motion. Whereas if I move it to the horizontal location, that's now much more sensitive to the horizontal motion. So for example, if it was rocking back and forward due to looseness um, or resonance, then the horizontal measurement will tell us about that. Um, and whether it's vertical or horizontal, they tell us, those two positions tell us about radial vibration vibration radiating out so if there was misalignment of an offset or parallel misalignment 
or on balance, we get a lot of that sort of up and down and side to side motion. But with uh, angular misalignment, for example, and certain types of bearing faults, it's more sensitive in the axial direction. So we put the sensor in line with the shaft, you might say, sort of in a position like that. And also, all the vibration from here isn't necessarily going to transmit through the coupling. So what we really want to do is try to measure at every single bearing to be absolutely sure we're picking up all the vibration, especially these high frequencies that don't travel very far. And I'll mention a bit more about that later on.